Can the Boston Celtics get any better? Honestly, it's a fair question considering they were had the best record in the NBA last year. They won the NBA Finals, and their roster is so deep, I could not imagine anybody coming in and making this team any better. But the real answer here is, yes, they can get better. Each starter has something they can work on individually to make sure there are zero gaps in their play and in return go back to back as NBA champions. So before we hop into that here on Celtics Today by Chat Sports, I'm your girl Allie Barefoot and we have gained thousands of subscribers since I took over this channel. Thank you guys so much but now I want to hear a little bit about your fandom. What year did you become a Boston Celtics fan? If you ask my dad, I'll go all the way back to Larry Bird days. If you ask me, I really got into the NBA towards the 2017 era so that's why I really started liking the Boston Celtics. But nonetheless, this last year was my favorite year that I have watched the Celtics since I have been alive. But there are a few things that each player can tweak that can make my experience more enjoyable. For example, when Jalen Brown goes to the line, it pisses me off. For the love of God, he can drain it from anywhere on the court except for the free throw line. And I'm being a little bit harsh, but it's only because this last year, when he was shooting from the free throw line, he was ass. But he hasn't been in the past. If you look over the last five years at Jalen Brown's free throw shooting, he had a almost a nearly career low. The first few years in the NBA, it was about 69%. 68% and so forth, but the little asterisk right here, he went from his career best free throw shooting, 76.5%, dropping all the way down to 70.3. He almost always makes the first one, but almost never makes the second one. It's just so ridiculous to watch. And he actually shot 45% from the free throw line, in round one of the NBA playoffs versus the Miami Heat, this was to start their run to win the NBA championship. Thank God the Boston Celtics are so stacked. You don't even think about the 45% from the free throw line. But the man was atrocious. And that needs to get better. But when you look at his right-hand man and Jason Tatum, I just kind of did an overview here. He just needs to have a better jump shot. And it sounds crazy. The man's been in MVP conversations the last three years. Allie, how is he not good at jumpers? Well, let me show you guys some stats here. In the playoffs, like I said, thank God the Boston Celtics were so stacked. This is the actual statistics of Jason Tatum's jumpers in the NBA playoffs this last season. He shot 28% on catch-and-shoot jumpers, 29% on pull-ups, and then pull-up mid-ranges was a whopping 31% from the field. That's terrible. Terrible. And I get it. Jason Tatum has a certain role in the Boston Celtics, just like Derek White, Drew Holiday, and so forth. But Jason Tatum, I do believe that that Achilles heel is his jump shot when it comes to pull-ups and catch-and-shoots that's keeping him from being a top scorer in the NBA. And he's still averaging about 27 points per game. But I have a question for you, because this is actually a pretty big argument right now in our chat sports office. Is Jason Tatum the best shooter in Boston? That's it. Not the best player, but currently on the roster, is he the best shooter? Would you want him to take the most shots, make the most shots on this roster? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I'll report back to everybody in there that has Jason Tatum slander, and I will let them know what you guys think. But before I hop into the other three starters here for the Boston Celtics, I want to tell you guys right now about Factor. This is a one-stop hub to make sure you guys are getting the most delicious and nutritious meals possible delivered right to your front door. I love the fact that I'm always trying to make sure I'm putting good quality ingredients in my body, and that's why I love using Factor because sometimes I don't have all the time in the world to put something good nutritious in my body. So with that being said, you get chef-crafted meals that are ready to go in just two minutes. That is how beautiful Factor is, and it can be yours today, and it's super easy. All you guys have to do 
to get a box delivered right to your door is head to factormeals.com slash chatsports50 and use code chatsports50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. And you're going to be getting 35 different meals with more than 60 add-ons to choose from every single week with new flavors to explore. I don't eat red meat. It's a preference. So having numerous types of protein is what I love about Factor and numerous add-ons. Your girl is a snacker. I love a good smoothie, especially their strawberry and banana smoothies. So one more time. That's code CHATSPORTS50 at Factormeals.com slash CHATSPORTS50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is still active. Go on ahead. Try a box today. I promise you guys are not going to regret it. All right, let's talk about number three, Derek White. It seems silly to put this in writing, but his selfishness is something he needs to work on. Derek White is a phenomenal two-way player, and it doesn't get shown that much just because of his role in the Boston Celtics. And that is nothing against Derek White. But this man has shown time and time again he will give everything to make sure the Boston Celtics win, including his front tooth. He was just diving on the floor in the NBA Finals. This was Game 5, and he ended up knocking out his tooth just to get the ball back. That is what he is willing to do. And I do think this is a selfishness that I will never ask him to get rid of. The selfishness, selflessness, selfishness, I want him to be less selfless. Oh, my God, I've said it too many times now. I don't even think it's a word. It's just very interesting in the fact that Derek White won't take as many shots as Jalen Brown or Drew Holiday. He won't even block as much because he knows Porzingis, now Horford, are down low. He won't take as many open three-pointers because they have so many sharp shooters on the Boston Celtics offense. But funny enough is that he actually took the most field goal attempts this season his entire career. But he also had a second-best assist Per game this season with 5.2. So he's dishing them out just as much as he is shooting the ball this year. He can go both ways, but I would love to see Derek White sometimes just take it, take advantage of the game. Because when Boston's playing their best basketball, I guarantee you, Derek White is having his best game. I would love to just see more versions of Derek White just being as aggressive as he possibly can. and said, you know what, Tatum, you're not making it with your jump shot at 29%. Let me take over. That's what I would like to see from Derek White. So I have a question here for you guys. Should Derek White take more shots for the Boston Celtics? Get that total points up. Get that field goal attempt up. Type S for shots. Type A for assists. If you guys want him to keep dishing it out and being the facilitator that he is, type assists. If you guys really want to see how well he can drain the rock, type S for shots. Number four, coming in with Drew Holiday, I'd rather just see him improve a little bit on finishing around the rim, and he's one of the best finishers I have seen as a guard for the Boston Celtics this last season. Stick with me here, because this topic is going to get a little weird with all the stuff that I am talking about. But the way that he finishes with his left hand is beautiful. Please bear with me here. I just I can't make this any less weird than it already is. But he does end up using that left hand even when he's on the right side of the basket. So I do think if he can finish with his right hand as much as he does as his left hand, I think that he can end up being a more versatile guard. Because defenses know Jalen Brown's not going to use his left hand as much as his right because he's just not as strong there. So if Drew Holiday were to improve his bag and start finishing on the right side of the basket with the right hand, it would make him more lethal as a score for the Boston Celtics. Because let me tell you, this man has no problem going down low. He has no problem finding the rim. One more time, just let's all be mature here. So with Drew Holiday, knowing that he can be a playmaker, he's not afraid to go up against the biggest big in the NBA and drive down low. If he can finish with both hands, I think his bag would be complete. The last one here, I'm going to talk about Al Horford since he will be the starter for the Boston Celtics. Just stay healthy. That's all I need from you, Big Al. He's 38 years old. You think he's changing his game? Absolutely not. Not a chance he's adding anything more to his repertoire. But he needs to stay healthy, especially when Chris S. Porzingis is not. Porzingis will not play the first two months for the Boston Celtics. Well, Horford, you have one thing you need to work on, and that is staying healthy. If you can start to play back-to-backs, I'll love that even more. But that might be a tall order to ask just because he is 38 years old, and he never really played back-to-backs in the last few years. So we just need Al Horford to stay healthy, and that's all he needs to improve on this season. 
My last question here for you guys. Will Al Horford retire at the end of the 2024-25 season? Comment why or why not? I say yes. He has one, one year left on his deal, and then he'll be 39 years old. Go spend time with your five children. But that's why I think he will. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. As always, hit that sub button for me on Celtics Today by Chat Sports. I have the latest news and rumors surrounded by your favorite NBA team. Always, all you guys have to do is subscribe.